Hello, Homestead. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stay standing for a moment of silence. When you think of high school experiences, a big thing is school dances. And while they can't go to prom, this is something that they could do without having to wait two years. Coming up today on HHS In Depth. It's been three years since Homestead has had an official semi-formal dance, but it's back again this year, and you'll learn all the details. Along with Sean Ross recap of last week's Donut Day and how much money was raised for the kids of Riley Hospital. Plus, in sports, our girls' cross-country team is headed for state after an incredible day at Semi-State last weekend. I'll give you more information later in Down to the Wire. Those stories coming to you today, only on HHS In-Depth. From Homestead Media, this is HHS In-Depth. Hello Homestead, I'm Noah Johanningsmeyer. And I'm Anthony Gary. And Noah, it's hard to believe, but it has been since our freshman year that the last time Homestead had an official semi-formal dance. But that's gonna change in three weeks. It's one of the most anticipated events each school year because all students from all grade levels can attend. And in to tell us more about this year's dance is HHS In Depth reporter, Graham DeWitt. On November 19th, the fall summer formal dance is finally coming back to Homestead after a three-year hiatus due to COVID. This event has been highly anticipated and almost every student who will be going will go for the very first time. Semi-formal is like a school dance, not prom, but people who are not juniors or seniors can also attend. The theme is Northern Lights, so decorations will kind of be like greenish, bluish lights. Semi-formal and prom are two of the biggest school events of the year. But there are some differences between the two, one being that semi-formal is restricted to Homestead students only. People who don't go to the school cannot come to semi-formal. Semi-formal may not appeal to everyone, but it's a fun event that all students can enjoy. It'll be one of the first real big experiences. When you think of high school experiences, a big thing is school dances. Tickets will be sold in the cafeteria at lunch starting next Monday at $20. Make sure to purchase one as soon as you can as the price will increase to $25 on November 19th, the night of the dance. Reporting for HHS In-Depth, I'm Graham DeWitt. All right, thank you Graham for the report. And joining us now is HHS In-Depth reporter, Luke Ryan. And Luke, it has already been over a month since the new Door 1 entrance has opened up, and we're still learning more and more about what goes on down there. That's right, Anthony. Things like drop-off, pick-up, and late arrival are all things that go on at Door 1. However, with new things come new changes. The new drop-off and pick-up area is in the new Door 1, which is down the hall from the cafeteria and to the right. The new bus slot is where you'd pull in to be dropped off or picked up. Then hit the buzzer in front of the doors and wait for the door to be opened. Look to your right and the door to the attendance office will be there. Once you open it, the staff members will check you in and open the door for you to begin your school day. Just remember this new location is where all students should enter Homestead before, during, and after school. With more areas opening up soon, this process should get easier for everyone. Thank you, Luke, and I'm excited to see what the rest of the new school has to offer. We hit the 70s on both Monday and Tuesday before things became more fall-like the last few days. But what does Mother Nature have in store for us this Halloween weekend? Stick around and I'll let you know later on in the show. Halloween is just around the corner. Treats, fun costumes, what's not to like? Halloween wasn't always a day about asking strangers for candy. The ghoulish celebration got its start as a Celtic holiday known as Samhain a pagan festival that celebrated the end of the harvest with bonfires and people donning costumes to keep spirits away. Some centuries later, the Catholic Church tried to curtail the festival as it didn't like the pagan rituals, so it decided to merge the event with All Saints Day on November 1st and All Hallows Eve on October 31st in the 7th century. All Hallows Eve borrowed many traditions, like putting on costumes from Samhain. By the 1930s, the holiday morphed into what we now know as Halloween. Celebrate by putting on a costume, watching a horror movie, or eating your favorite candy. Have a happy Halloween, Homestead! 
You're watching HHS In Depth. Welcome back to HHS In Depth. Well, last week, a lot of Spartans took part in the Donut Day festivities to help raise money for Riley Children's Hospital. HHS In Depth reporter Sean Ross tells us how much money those amazing Rise and Roll Donuts raised us this year. Last Thursday, Riley Dance Marathon held a fundraising event at Homestead called Donut Day. Donut Day is a day where Riley Dance Marathon sells donuts and all of our proceeds go to Riley Children's Hospital. We started doing this event last year, second semester I believe, and we kind of got it started again this year because it gained a lot of fundraising for Riley. The turnout for Donut Day was very successful with several students purchasing a total of 22 dozen donuts and the club making a profit of $323.87 with a fundraising goal of $30,000 for the entire year. I think it went really good. I'm pretty sure that we sold out of all of our donuts, which is always a good sign and we definitely raised a good amount of money for Riley. I kind of organized this and we kind of piggybacked off of last year's Donut Day, so all of the ideas and resources were already there. It just needed some organization and to get people to sign up. If you would like to get involved, email Katie at the email address shown below. Riley Dance Marathon Club welcomes everyone to join this club and help raise money for Riley Children's Hospital. Next club meeting is November 3rd in room 303. Reporting for HHS In-Depth, I'm Sean Ross. Thanks, Sean. Not in DECA? What the heck -a? Next Thursday on November 3rd, Mr. McNeil will be hosting DECA's first call-out meeting of the year. DECA offers an opportunity to compete in business competitions at the regional, state, and national level. If you are interested in business, please go to the seminar room after school next week to get signed up. Many students indulge in a fright during the Halloween season, but picking the best place can be a hard choice. The Haunted Castle in Black Forest is one of Fort Wayne's best offerings for a scary good time. HHS and depth reporter Mauro Nicholson breaks down one fun option this Halloween. Please be aware this story involves flashing lights and may not be suitable for all audiences. Why do we like to be scared by horror movies, haunted houses, or murder mysteries? The Haunted Castle embraces this natural high and makes it a frightening experience for everyone. Last year I went to the Haunted Castle with my friends and I think it was that experience that really brought us together. Just all the screaming and crying, just something about it made like it's just our friendship so much stronger. The Haunted Castle in Black Forest is run by volunteers from the Boy Scouts and Adventure Scouts who dress up as the spooky characters inside the attractions. I think the Black Forest is definitely my favorite part because it actually has scared me. Um, and the Haunted Castle is just so much fun. The Haunted Castle and Black Forest have been around for decades and has become a must-see during Halloween season. This has been a Halloween tradition for many years. People like my daughter love to go in here and get scared. I recommend it to anybody who wants a good time with their friends. Both the Black Forest and the Haunted Castle take about 30 minutes to complete each. The Haunted Castle contains ghosts, slides, and elevator rides, while the Black Forest consists of clowns, creepers, and chainsaws. I think that both experiences are really, really fun. It's just a great place to go with your friends. If you're up for this spooktacular event, make sure to come to the Haunted Castle and Black Forest this Halloween weekend. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Mara Nicholson. Well, last weekend, with the amazing weather outside, you might have been looking for a place to get a bowl of delicious ice cream. That search may have led you down the road to Roanoke to check out the newest ice cream parlor, Jebby's Ice Cream Shop. And in now to tell you more about the business is HHS in-depth reporter, Nada DeHook. A local, family-owned business that serves unique flavors of fresh, hard-dipped ice cream. Jebby's Ice Cream Shop first opened on July 1st, when Homestead parents Jody Bottoms and Deb Carnahan set their minds on opening up an establishment in Roanoke. The idea first came up when Jody's daughter asked if she wanted to go get ice cream. When considering where to go, it became apparent that none of the available franchises on the southwest side of town served hard dipped, as most of them offered soft serve instead. From there, Jody contacted the owner of an old rundown Roanoke building and suggested making it an ice cream shop. After that, the idea took off, and more and more customers walked through the doors of Jebby each day to try their unique flavors. Just all the customers that come in are just so polite and fun and then we have returning customers that we've gotten to know over the past couple of months and it's just a um, wonderful time to have them come in and chit chat and learn their stories and they can learn our stories. 
We all love it when it's busy, crazy line out the door because it's just kind of chaotic, but we all work really well together. It's just kind of proving that like we could do it. You know what I mean? Like here I am, 48 years old, never have owned a business before, never have done anything like this. Um, and I thought, I'm going to try it and see what happens. And if I fail, I fail. But if I don't, that's going to be great. So I think just like proving, hey, you're never too old to do anything. If you really set your mind to it and you have the right people there to support you, you can do anything you want. So just go ahead and try it. Along with Jody graduating from Homestead herself in the class of 92, her daughter Evie Bottoms is a senior at Homestead who watched the process of starting up the business from start to finish. I mean, I was there when she first had, my mom first had the idea to even start this and I heard every detail, uh, all the trips they took. But it started as just this little building in Roanoke that was super run down and abandoned. And to see it turn into this, honestly, I love it. I think it's adorable. I think they did a really great job. And I don't think I would have ever been able to bring something like that to life. Outside of the type of ice cream they serve, Jebby stands out from other shops with the unique signature flavors representing different area high schools. The Spartan Homestead's very own flavor is a blue moon sundae covered in yellow and blue sprinkles and topped with a cherry. If you want to come and support Jebby's, they're open Tuesday through Sunday on Main Street in Roanoke. So come by to pick up a scoop or a pint of ice cream. For HHS In Depth, I'm Nada DeHook. Thanks, Nada. Well, it's not every year that you get to see temps in the 70s in late October, but that's exactly what took place earlier this week. Sophia Virgilio joins us now to tell us if those 70s are a thing of the past for good. That's right, Anthony and Noah. Hitting the 70s last weekend and earlier this week was very rare for this late in October. And unfortunately, we're not going to see those temps again this weekend. Since the month is coming to a close, it is officially unacceptable to leave the house without a jacket. Make sure to throw one on over your costume this weekend as temperatures will barely reach past 60 degrees. The high for this afternoon will be 61 with an overnight low of 33 degrees and we'll have partly cloudy skies throughout the evening. As for the weekend, Saturday temperature will peak at 64 degrees and drop to 41 overnight. But we'll have sunny skies all day long and it'll be a perfect fall day. As for Sunday, there is a slight chance of rain with a high of 61 degrees falling to a low of 49 overnight. Will it be too cold to go trick-or-treating on Monday? Stick around and I'll be back with a final check of the forecast later on. Thanks, Sophia. Next in Down to the Wire, Morgan Gillette gets us caught up on all our Spartan sports news over the last week, including a first in school history. Stick around. You're watching HS in Depth. Hello, Homestead. Here's this week's club roundup. K-pop club meets today after school in room 924. Euchre club meets today after school in room 212. Players of all experience levels are welcome. Minority Student Union meets today after school in room 611. Students for Life will meet Tuesday in Mr. Tucky's room, room 503. Snacks will be provided. Do you like movies and discussing them? Come to Film Club in room 614 next Tuesday after school. They will be starting Iron Man and discussing his impact on the film industry. Chess Club will meet every Wednesday after school at 2.40 in room 608, Senor Hoon's room, for a short meeting and snack. Then, they will move to room 604C to play chess until 3.45. The deadline to sign up to participate in the tournament with Bishop Lures after school on November 9th here at Homestead. Please respond to the Canvas discussion to sign up. Creative Writing Club meets Thursday after school in room 932. Anime Club meets next week on Thursday after school in room 924. Audio aficionados will not meet next Wednesday due to the flex day. To get up-to-minute club updates and additional information, please check out the HHS announcements page on Canvas. For HHS In-Depth, I'm Matthias Herzmendi. Welcome back to Down to the Wire, I'm Morgan Gillette. Our girls' volleyball team season ended against McCutcheon at Regionals last week. The girls finished their season with a record of 27-7, and one of the best records the team has ever had in Homestead history. The girls' cross-country team won last Saturday at Marion for the New Haven Semi-State. This was the first ever semi-state championship for the girls' cross-country team in school history. Addison Canabla finished second place with a time of 17-19, and set a new school record by over 20 seconds. Tomorrow, the state meet will be down in Terre Haute at the Laverne Gibson Cross Country Course. The best the girls have ever finished was third in 2016, and right now, the odds for them to finish in the top five stands at 57.4%. 
For our boys' tennis team, congratulations to Steven Meyer, Alex Graber, and Max Holliday on being selected to the All-State first team in singles and doubles. The football team is back in action after a bye week last week as they're playing at number one ranked Hamilton Southeastern this evening. Go support Homestead and be aware of the new time for kickoff taking place at 7.30 p.m. That'll do it for this week's edition of Down to the Wire. Thank you for watching and Sophia will have a final check of the forecast when we return. Next week on HHS In Depth, reporter Jaron Ellis brings you a story with information about the Spartana and their updated website that some may not know about. Catch this story and more next week. A reminder that Saturday and Sunday are looking like great fall weather days, especially tomorrow as the sun will shine all day long. Looking forward into next week, unfortunately right now, Halloween on Monday looks like we will have a rainy evening, with a high of 61 and a low of 49 overnight. The high jumps to 65 on Tuesday with partly cloudy skies. Temperatures will rise again on Wednesday and Thursday with a high of 69 each day. Just when we thought we'd never see the 70s again this year, it looks like by the end of next week, we could be hitting those numbers once again. Noah Anthony, back to you. All right, thank you, Sophia, and thank you for watching today. Good luck to all of our Homestead athletes and other performers in action this weekend. Want to catch up with HHS in depth beyond this new show? Check out our Instagram for updates on future shows and nationwide news. Have a great weekend, and we will see you back here again next week.